Hey there friends, if you're thinking about what to do for your postdoc, I think it's important to be aware of some basic strategy and this is what I want to talk about in this video. Of course, what you end up doing will depend on a very large number of factors that include which positions are available, with whom, what fellowship opportunities are there, what's your personality and what are your personal goals in the first place. But that notwithstanding, I think that there are some <laughs> a broad dichotomy of approaches that you can follow basically for your postdoc and this is what I want to talk about. And the two main strategies that I see as admittedly extremes and maybe nobody's gonna really do exactly just one or the other are more deepening or more spreading. So let's call them deepening and spreading. Deepening is probably the most obvious choice for most people. You've spent your PhD honing your skills on a particular topic or approach or technique. And now it seems quite natural for your postdoc to pick a lab where they apply this technique, are experts in that technique or method or approach or organism group or topic or whatever it is. And you just deepen your knowledge by going to this lab and learning more for several years about this particular topic. The advantage is clearly that that feeds directly into you're getting known for a particular theme or topic. And that is extremely important as you're an early career researcher is to stand for something so you're easily recognized and identified with a particular topic. And of course picking a postdoc lab that basically helps you directly with continuing along this path is going to feed directly into this goal of you being more known for something. Another advantage of taking this path is that of course you will then more naturally build your network in this particular field. I mean if you have any questions or if you're stuck in any point there will be always other people in this new lab of your postdoc around who you can ask and you can they can help you troubleshoot and move forward. And of course that is not to be underestimated. One potential disadvantage is that as you are continuing to work on this particular theme in a, in a lab that is very specialized on this particular topic there is potentially less opportunity for you to learn and get into completely new things. So that will be on you to also provide somehow. The exact opposite of that approach is the spreading approach where you take what you have learned during your PhD and you bring it basically to a host lab where they don't do that at all basically so you add that expertise of yours to well the portfolio of the new host lab. This is probably a less obvious choice compared to the first one the deepening. And it may be surprising and maybe it is also logistically a bit more difficult to set up in terms of having the connections with somebody that's quite maybe somewhat outside of your field. But there are also some distinct advantages. One advantage is that the papers that come out of that postdoc on this particular topic that is your expertise, even though it's done in this other lab, will be more likely directly attributed to you rather than to the PI of the host lab because people will know that you are the person that does this particular thing rather than the PI of that host lab. Another advantage that this is the great opportunity to be exposed to a completely different set of topics and to really learn something new again. If you believe you have basically mastered whatever you worked on during your PhD, this would be a great way to basically broaden your knowledge in a particular area. This of course means that you're directly honing your ability to collaborate but at the potential cost that you maybe are not taking that much of a deep dive in what you have been already doing during your PhD and so you may not be refining that knowledge quite to the same extent that if you went to a lab where they are actually specializing on this technique. One disadvantage of doing that is that depending on what it is that you are doing you may really have to tool up in the new lab because they will of course not be set up for what you're doing. So if this is a particular lab technique then this may actually set you back a bit because you will have to first set this up. If it's more something like a statistical technique then of course it's much more portable and you will already be set up on your computer to do it. But so this very much depends on what it is that you're bringing to this lab. And of course 
you will then rely either on already having acquired excellent expert knowledge in your area of expertise or you will really depend on having established a fantastic network that if there is a problem coming up and if you need to troubleshoot or if you have questions about something, you know exactly who to, who to go to basically and to discuss this with because these people will not be in that lab because you have brought a set of expertise to that lab. So it, it basically increases a bit the pressure on you, of course, to deliver on this particular topic, of course. These are admittedly two extremes, right? The deepening and the spreading. In reality, you're going to be somewhere in between, most likely. So for example, if you're pursuing the spreader model, you are very unlikely to go to a lab that is completely different from what you have done before. There's going to be something in common also with this other lab, otherwise it will have been very difficult for you to get that job in the first place. And if you go for the deepening mode, of course you can also still learn new things because maybe in this new host lab people will approach that exact same topic from slightly different angles or in slightly different ways. And of course, it's mostly also on you how broad you will interact also with others, maybe just outside of that group, also in the new department that you're joining. But I think very likely people will have a certain preference for one route or the other. And I think it's good to sort of hear that there is these two basic modes of what you can do, because maybe then you make a more conscious choice of what you really want to get out of your postdoc. And this also applies if you are applying for a fellowship, for example, because then it's more on you, right? You design more your research program and then you have really the full breadth of choice. Am I the person that brings a certain technique to a lab where they're asking interesting questions and they may need that method? This is fantastic. Or are you going to a lab where you're gonna more and more deepen your skills? This is basically when you have to make that decision if you write your own fellowship proposal. It's also important to say that both work, right? I mean, both of these extremes and everything in between, it can work. Like I, for example, did the spreader model where I went to a lab where they didn't have knowledge of this particular organism group I was working on during my PhD. But of course, I moved not too far away really from that field. It was still an ecology lab. They were still, for example, doing global change. And that worked well for me because I also had a network where I could always ask people about questions if I didn't know something about this particular topic. For me, this worked really well. But I also had a choice at the time to go to another lab that was more like the deepening mode. Um, and there were a bunch of other um, considerations that also played into this decision. So it's not usually just this unidimensional um, deepening versus spreading, but that played quite a large role in my decision at the time, I would say. And so I hope having heard about this or thinking about this in a more systematic way will help you make a great choice for the postdoc of your dreams. And with that, best of luck with that. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments about this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.